This is a big old fishing expedition in New South Wales. But don't worry, little guys, you're not going to end up on a plate. It's a rescue mission, a modern-day Noah's Ark. Except without the ark and the two-by-two two thing and the flooding. I mean, fish like water. But you get the idea. We managed to reach 100 fish in one day, so hopefully we can do that uh, every day and that would put us up around 400 fish uh, for the week. It's a massive effort to save as many fish as possible from what the New South Wales government has described as a fish Armageddon. Armageddon. <clears throat> Sounds ominous, and it kind of is. You might remember seeing pictures like this earlier in the year. Another quarter large cod that's perished. Up to a million fish died in parts of the Murray-Darling because of algal blooms, a type of bacteria that leaches the oxygen out of water. Fish are like us, they need oxygen. Uh, and as that water uh, quality deteriorates, often oxygen is something that uh, gets depleted. Uh, and as that disappears, so basically, yeah, the fish will, um, will more or less suffocate. The algae grows when that water isn't flowing properly, and scientists say it's one of the signs of a river system in crisis. The Murray-Darling stretches all the way from Queensland through New South Wales and the ACT, then down to Victoria and South Australia. And it's Australia's biggest and most important river system, bringing life to the hot, dry centre of the country. The farms here provide about a third of Australia's food supplies, and a lot of them are irrigated with water taken from the river. But for decades, there have been arguments between states, farmers and towns over how the water is shared around, especially in times of drought. States downstream have accused states upstream of taking too much water out for growing things like cotton and nuts and leaving others without enough water and hurting the river. That's why in 2007, Australia's government created a plan to take care of the river and an agency to oversee it. But some say it hasn't worked. In the past few weeks, there have been protests along the river, with some farmers saying they're being left to suffer with no water even though the river is flowing and that the water still isn't being shared fairly. Some experts also reckon the Basin Plan hasn't done enough to protect the river from the effects of climate change. The Basin Authority says that's not true, and the federal government says it's the drought that's causing the problems and only rain can fix it. In the meantime, the New South Wales government has announced a $10 million fish rescue package to try to make sure what happened last summer doesn't happen again. So that's why the whole Noah's Ark thing is going on. Hundreds of native fish like golden perch and Murray cod, some up to 25 years old, are being scooped up and relocated. Our fishy friends will go to other, healthier parts of the river or to hatcheries where they'll be cared for until the water starts flowing again. While many are hoping it'll help, Others say a lot more needs to be done to save the river and everything and everyone that depends on it.